Hi foodie friends, I'm Jessica, and today we are making almond pound cake. This is a fun, fresh version of my classic vanilla pound cake, which is rich, buttery, decadent, amazing on its own, but also super versatile. You can use it to make grilled pound cake, French toast pound cake. I know, did you know you could even do that? It's already amazing. You could top it with whipped cream, berries. It's perfect with coffee or tea or as a light dessert. Maybe it's not so light, it is pound cake. So let's get started. First, we're gonna start off with our dry ingredients. We are sifting them. Make sure you always sift dry ingredients so that they end up being well incorporated. I am going to measure my flour using a spoon spooning it into the cup versus scooping it in to make sure that I have the right amount. If you scoop it in, you'll likely have way too much flour. The right way would really be to measure it using a kitchen scale, but we all know that I am a super lazy baker, so I still go with this method, but you can very well measure it with a kitchen scale. This cake takes three cups of an all-purpose flour, probably have that in your pantry. In fact, you probably have everything you need to make this in your pantry. Super easy cake to throw together when you need something quick. Three cups. Did you know that pound cake got its name originally in the 1700s? It dates back to the 1700s, that far. I don't know how they know that, but they do. They are smart people. And it was originally called pound cake because it used equal parts flour, sugar, butter, and eggs. One pound of each. And that's how they got the cake. And they always got it right because it was also weighed, not measured with, with measuring cups. Okay, we're gonna use one teaspoon of baking powder and one fourth teaspoon of coarse kosher salt. Salt in baked goods helps bring out some of the natural flavors and balance the sweet. Although this cake isn't an overly sweet cake, it's more of a buttery cake, if you will. Go ahead and put that together. I like the crank ones, the hand ones that go like this, make my hands hurt after a while. It only takes a few extra seconds to do. This is one of the tasks that kids love, cranking away. If you don't have a sifter, go ahead and put those dry ingredients in a separate bowl and whisk them together. It also gets out any of the large clumps. You don't want a large clump of flour ending up in your cake, do you? No. Okay. I'm gonna set this aside. This recipe takes five minutes on beating the batter, so I do use my KitchenAid mixer so I can be a little bit more hands-off. And when we're alternating in milk and dried goods, not having to have one of my hands take it up by an electric mixer makes things a lot easier. The first thing we're gonna do is cream together the butter and sugar. This is one cup of unsalted butter. I do use unsalted because I wanna make sure that I have control over the salt levels. If I use salted butter, they're in control. You can use salted butter, I'm not telling you not to, but omit any of the other salt in the dry ingredients. If you do that and then taste the batter to make sure that it isn't overly salty before you add that in. I'm gonna cream these together so that the butter flattens out. We don't want any big lumps of butter and the sugar will start to dissolve into it. Let's go. Why does creamed butter and sugar smell so darn good? It's so simple. So you wanna beat it together until it's nice and fluffy and I'm looking around for any large bits of anything and I don't see that. It's pretty smooth so I'll go ahead and start adding the rest of my ingredients. The next thing is five eggs. This recipe does use a lot of eggs. Again, remember one pound of everything and that's gonna include those eggs. And instead of vanilla extract, I'm using almond extract. It has a lovely aroma. One teaspoon is all you need, but I usually put in two because I really like the smell of it. it smells very nutty, floral. Okay. Ooh. You'll likely need to scrape down the sides, and I see a little piece of egg in mine too. 
I let my kids help with cracking the eggs and there's always a little bit of a risk that you take there when you let the kiddos help. Okay. But I love having them in the kitchen. I feel like they're so much more aware of the food that they're eating when they're involved in making it and they really enjoy baking. Although anytime I mention cake, if said cake does not have frosting, we're in trouble. Cake is not cake if it does not have frosting. So we're still a little clumpy. I'm gonna lock that in and go ahead and keep stirring. And we're mixing, 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 we're mixing. Trust me, it's a lot of mixing. This is why we're not doing it by hand or using a hand mixer. Okay, this is not perfectly smooth, it's not perfectly incorporated, and that is okay. As we start to add the dry ingredients in the milk, it's gonna all start to come together and be your perfect cake batter that you would think of. So I have my dry ingredients here. I have my milk, Ugh, quite a reach over there. This is whole milk, you can use skim milk if you wanted to, but whole milk has all that fat in it, and you are making a pound cake. Why in the world would you want to skimp when it comes to the milk, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is alternate putting these in and additions. This helps it not get too clumpy and dry, but also not get too soupy and wet. If you do it all together at once, you're gonna have a few problems. So I'm gonna start with my dry ingredients, about a third of the dry ingredients going in there, so around a little bit, like a heaping cup, I'd say. It doesn't have to be exact. Lock it in and get it going. Because we are doing a pound cake, this is a little bit more dense, I'm not as worried about being light and fluffy, so we are gonna mix it, like I said, for an extended amount of time. So that is almost all the way incorporated in, does not have to be perfect, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of milk while it's mixing. If I added that all together, it would have gotten too soupy. I'm gonna open this up. One too many times have I tried to add the dry ingredients with the handle down, and it never ends up in my favor. Okay, we'll probably go ahead and do the rest of the dry ingredient here. Do, do, do. All in. There we go. Lock it. At this point, I am going to scrape down the sides for anything that got stuck there. Flour, some dough, make sure that the bottom gets scooped up to the top. And then I am just gonna let the KitchenAid do all of the work. I'm gonna let it mix and blend for about five minutes. What you'll see is the texture of this cake batter will change as it continues to mix. Right now it looks a little bit grainy, but by the end of that five minutes, it's gonna be super smooth. Here we are, I'm back. It's been about five minutes and this batter is coming along nicely. I'm gonna take it all out here, scrape some of that off. Okay. The other good thing about using a KitchenAid for this is the spore pout. Spore, <laughs> is the pore spout. Oh my goodness, I'm losing it today. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to try to eyeball this again, totally lazy, 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 lazy cook here, I'm a lazy baker. When I'm cooking savory stuff, I'm fine. Get that all on in there, even it out as best we can, even it out. These pans have been greased and floured. You could also use parchment paper. Even them out. Get that off. Tap them a few times. And toss them in the oven. Don't toss them. Put them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 60 minutes. Do the toothpick test. Make sure that they're done all the way through. And then we're going to let them cool before we give them a glossy almond icing. 
Hi foodie friends, we are back. Our cakes have cooked. They are lightly brown. The trick to getting them out of the pan is inverting them when they are still a tad bit hot and not fully cooled, but not so hot that they aren't still congealing together. So these should come out pretty easily. I can feel them, feel them wiggling and hear them wiggling. If yours don't, run a butter knife around the edges and pop it on over there. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful plop. Doot. Man, pretty darn good getting those similar sizes considering I was eyeballing it. Okay, here we go. So we've got two almond pound cakes and now we're gonna make the, and very, very flowery hands. Now we are going to make the glaze. So I'm gonna start out with two cups of powdered sugar and more almond extract. I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon, but you can feel free to use a little bit more. I'm gonna use a little bit more. I really like the almond. If you're going almond, why not go all almond? And then two to four tablespoons of whole milk. That whole milk is really gonna make this nice and velvety. But I'm sure we've all been there before where we added a little bit too much milk and then we're adding more powdered sugar. And then we added too much powdered sugar and now we're adding a little bit more milk. So go slow and finish mixing it all before you add any more liquid to avoid that issue. Our goal here is a smooth glaze. Mine's a little bit sticky still, so I'm gonna add a tad bit more. That's drizzleable, drizzleable. Is that a word? Drizzleable. We'll make that a word. It's my word now. We want it to be drizzleable, blah, 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 blah. And just like that, I might have actually added a little bit too much. We'll see. Let's, let's keep it going. But that it will set up and harden as it cools. I think we're just right. I think we're just right. So that was probably about two and a half to three tablespoons of milk. And I swear every time I make this, it changes. And that's why I give you that ratio. Just go slow. Perfect. I can really smell the almond coming out of this glaze. All the little lumps of powdered sugar are starting to disappear. We got it just right. I am going to use the whisk to drizzle it over these cakes. Okay. Set these aside. I have these on a wire rack and that's so that the frosting can drench over and there's aluminum foil underneath this so it's easy cleanup and I won't have to actually wash the pan, only the wire rack. Again, a lazy baker, remember? Okay, here we go. Drizzle, 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 drizzly, drizzle. Can't say that five times fast. I am no slouch when it comes to drizzling and frosting. Feel free to add as much or as little as you want. What you do need to do is add enough that you can get sliced almonds to stick to the top. So move a little fast here just so that that frosting is still tacky. Here we go, that one's covered a little bit more than the other, but whatever. They're sisters, they're not twins, right? Okay and sprinkle. So the higher you sprinkle, the more even those almonds will go on there. Some of them might even spread a little bit off, and that's okay, we'll add more. Add them towards the center. Again, I really like the crunch of that almond. This is an almond pound cake, so why not go all out? And there we go. Almond pound cake, perfect for coffee. Tea, rich, buttery, decadent, delicious. You can also make it into grilled pound cake or pound cake French toast. Chop it up, put it in a trifle. You can do whatever you want. There's a ton of different things. It's such a versatile dessert. From my kitchen to yours, have a great day. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, leave me a like, do something, tell me you're out there. I love hearing from you. Bye.